From the banks of the Allegheny, welcome to Film Bits, True Detective, Episode 4. All right, the pursuit for Tyrone Weems is on. But there's going to be a thing or two that happens in this segment of the episode that has nothing to do with Weems that is very, very important. Let's roll. Associates, family. So we cut from Marty, who was talking to the cops at the very end of the last episode in present day. To Marty in the past, and there's some suitcases on the floor. I think you all know what's coming. Yep. Um, how do you think Marty's lit there? What kind of light is that? Hot, warm, cold, like I did last episode. Again, it's looking a little yellow to me. Now, he's on the phone with Lisa right now. Lisa must have got a hold of Maggie. Yikes. Let's pick it back up. Yellow light. Listen, I just need to know exactly what you told her. I have children. You blew up my life, you fucking whore. What did you just call me? What did you just call Yikes. me? Yikes. Fuck. Wet noodle, wet eating, faggot, fuck. I will skull fuck you, you bitch. Hello, Jake. Jake, is this you? Marty. Is your Maggie there? That's none of your goddamn business. Jake, I know she's there. I know she's there. Just, so just no, put her on the phone, would you Marty. please? Leave her alone, you fucking asshole. Jake, I... You're not hearing me. I don't know what she told you. alone. And I know we haven't always seen eye to eye. You're but goddamn right. We've just never please seen eye put her on the phone no. for me. All right, so we have two things going on. We have that low angle for that phone discussion, okay? Um, which is usually used to show uh, the superiority. Uh, like Marty is bigger than what is in front of him. But uh, interestingly, it's turned on its head here because he's obviously smaller. He's begging. He's weak. He realizes he, he's screwed up to the point of no return with his with Maggie. And then we have this light, all right? Uh, and again, I'm going to argue for that yellow light that even though it's coming in, we see that, we see the shot from the window that that's um, what's, what's lighting the, the room. Uh, a lot of that light is yellow, and it's not consistent throughout this whole segment, but whenever we are in the close-ups or the mediums, it is. When we get out to this kind of medium-wide here, uh, we see that it diffuses, the, that the light goes away. But when we're in the close, it isn't. And again, why is that significant? The yellow light, what is going on when I'm mentioning these ye this yellow light? Meaning, what's going on in the scene? And how do we connect that back to the idea of this Yellow King. Maybe we don't have enough info on the Yellow King yet, but that's what you should be thinking of, all right? Little subtleties that we can miss that the filmmakers are using to give us extra depth or tell us extra info about the story that's not coming across through dialogue. Let's pick it back up. Now, you are no Please. damn good, Marty. She deserves better, and don't call here again. Jake. How many answers you guys have? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. It did, did I make some mistakes? Yes. You know the detective's curse? Solution was right under my nose, but I was paying attention to the wrong clues. I mean, I can keep carrying this out more and more and more, but again, what kind of light is he in? To me... It's looking kind of yellow. You may disagree. 
Just pointing it out. So if he is lit in this yellowing light, what's going to happen in this scene? Is it significant or is it not? To match any theory you would have to tie this yellow light to the Yellow King. Whoever that is. Oh, and now he's drinking on top of it. Oh yeah, that's a lot of yellow light in the reflection of the tree on top of it. Now there's a nice br uh, bright white light over there on the on the building to kind of sh show you the contrast of the different kinds of lights that are being used here. That's sodium yellow from the street lights. That that's that kind of yellow. And now we just get that kind of blend of various lights uh, in the street reflected in the window. But he was resting in it, and now he's pursuing Tyrone Weems' ex-girlfriend. Oh, and now they're way out in the middle of nowhere. We went from some town to out in the middle of nowhere in one cut. And now there's some light off a of ye yellow light off in the distance. And it looks like a rave. And that's that. Okay, there's just no mistake in here. <laughs> it's lit smoke that definitely appears yellow. We've got all these colors, but yellow is definitely there. And Marty's in and amongst it. And we can see it. That's an actual yellow bulb. Plus those bulbs that are back there giving everything a yellow cast. The lighting is so pushed behind Marty that he's just a silhouette. We can't even make features out in his face. All we get is the light and that, that shower of sparks. Which I would not say is yellow. I would say that's a, a wider, hotter light. Now we see with this interior, there's a lot of yellow light. There's other colors like green, red, and purple, but the predominance is yellow there. Now Marty is out of that interior, heading to a different part of it where the light is not as pronounced, or maybe it's outside because of those tents. It's hard to tell for me, but he's now left that area. Reggie Ledoux, where is he now? That's what it's about. Yo, man, why didn't you say so? Where the fuck is he? I, I heard he still cook. I heard he stopped selling after he did his bit. He, he only cooked for one client now. Who? Some bike gang. They buy all his product, bulk order. No mess. I heard this at the clubs is all. Reggie don't distribute no more. Which fight club? Iron Heroes or some shit. Iron, Iron Crusaders. I don't keep up with them gearheads. Iron Crusaders, you sure? Yup, them ones. What I heard, Reggie cut bell loads, and that's all. Close your eyes and count to a hundred if you can. Go. One, two, louder. Three, four, five. And that's where we're gonna stop it today. Um, Seems like we're starting to see, well, we always knew Rust was a little uh, uh, a little dicey when it came to following the exact regulations. We saw that in episode two. But now, Marty, who has been the you know straight and narrow cop with some uh, recent life changes, I guess, perhaps, is uh, also willing to bend those rules a little bit and go outside the lines of the law. All right, so we will see you, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, very soon. Make sure you watch the companion episode to this uh, about the land or the uh, setting, place as a character. I, I uploaded them both at the same time. Take care, and we'll see you on the next one.